Although many people still recognise the name Stanley Matthews, few know the full extent of his achievements, fame, and what the game today owes him, the man who heralded the footballer as superstar and celebrity. Stanley, the third of four sons, was born to Elizabeth and Jack Matthews in 1915. Jack, a local barber and semi-pro boxer, took his training very seriously. Spotting Stan's athletic potential early, he helped instill in his son the temperament and dedication that was to last a lifetime. Stan's ability, fitness and love of the game was such that he continued to play at the highest level until an incredible 50 years of age, well into the modern era. However, when Stan signed for Stoke City as a professional at the age of 17, football was a very different game to the one we know today. He had to walk to work, he was paid a maximum wage of £5 per week, which went down to £3 in the summer break, and nobody had even considered ideas like product endorsement. Soon, his reputation began to spread. Wearing the number 7 shirt he was to make his own, his ability to confound and outfox defenders led to him being called the Wizard of Dribble and the Magician. One ploy in particular rightly caught the public imagination. Dubbed the Matthews Move, it helped proclaim his remarkable ability. Mixed fortunes with the England squad inspired Matthews to even greater efforts. He broke new ground with a sort of strict diet, early morning runs, exercise plan and stamina training that is now taken for granted. It was said that Stan could draw crowds of up to 10,000 extra people at away games just to see him in action. Suspension of the Football League during the World War II period robbed football of the joy of seeing Stan at his peak and only allowed glimpses of the heights his career might have reached. With the return of the Football League in 1946-47 and after playing with Stoke from 1932, Stan moved to Blackpool FC. The move provided Stan with a fresh opportunity to realise a long-cherished ambition and despite falling at the final hurdle in the FA Cup Finals of 49 and 51, in 1953, in the last 20 minutes of the game famously called the Matthews Final, Blackpool turned a 3-1 deficit into a remarkable 4-3 victory, and Stanley earned an FA Cup medal in front of a crowd of 80,000 people. Besotted supporters began to chant, On Stanley, On. An embarrassed Matthews pointed out afterwards that it should have been called the Mortensen Final, as he'd scored the winning hat-trick. Universal fame was rare, but even little children playing in Zanzibar knew who Stanley Matthews was, as he found out when he visited. His raised profile meant that new opportunities for Stan to supplement what, by today's standards, were paltry wages – £12 per week, some £380 in today's money – a non-smoker, he promoted cigarettes, he had his own brand of football boots, and even authored a newspaper column that he didn't actually write. Although he never got a chance to shine in a World Cup tournament, memorably in 1956 England defeated Brazil 4-2 at Wembley in a match where Stanley Matthews completely outplayed the man marking him, Nilton Santos. At the time, Santos was 28 years old, Matthews was 41. Santos is still considered to be one of the all-time great defenders. That year, Matthews was the inaugural winner of the Ballon d'Or, the European Footballer of the Year. Stan returned to play for an ailing Stoke City team in 1961. On his debut against Huddersfield Town at the age of 46, he trebled the previous week's attendance. Stan played his last game in 1965, just after his 50th birthday. Official retirement in no way saw an end to Stan's involvement with football. He'd had a long association with Africa and had once been crowned the King of Soccer in Ghana something to add to the knighthood he received in 1965. Stan's African adventures culminated in him being the first coach to lead an all-black soccer team on a tour outside of South Africa's harsh apartheid regime when he coached a team of boys in Soweto. Narrowly averting an international incident, they went to Brazil and met the boys' footballing heroes. To learn more about the talent that was Sir Stanley Matthews, buy Matthews, the original number 7, on DVD and VOD now. Here's a short trailer for the film.